Good. What's cracking guys? Omar Esoff here, here with Coach Brian. Coach, what we learned today? Today we're going to learn the overhead squat. Okay, now why should people do the overhead squat? Not just obviously Olympic lifters, they have to do it, right? Um, but why should everybody do it? Well, I think first of all, Olympic lifters are required to do overhead squat. It's part of uh, performing a full snatch. If you don't have a, an adequate overhead squat, you're likely not going to be a good Olympic weightlifter. But uh, for somebody new to Olympic weightlifting, somebody wanting to learn, or just a, an, an average Joe client, the overhead squat is a good test and barometer of your overall level of mobility. Yeah. So oftentimes we do it in our warm up, our dynamic warm up before we begin the day to kind of check in on how our overall mobility is doing and some of the areas that we might want to focus on. When I go to the high bar squat, it feels a hell of a lot easier because if you have the mobility to do the overhead squat, you're clearly going to have it for the high bar. Yeah, it, it's a good check in. Like I said, if, if at the beginning of every workout we get you or our clients to do the overhead squat, if things look great, we know we're ready to start. Yeah. So a back squat or front squat is going to be a lot easier compared to the overhead squat. And if things aren't quite there, if for whatever reason we're lacking mobility, then we know that and we can kind of focus our efforts on some more specific mobility protocols for that day. Makes sense. There are many ways to start the overhead squat. Some of you will uh, start the lift by pulling the bar out of the rack on your back and uh, push pressing it overhead. Some people might split jerk the bar overhead. Some people might snatch the bar overhead before actually doing the overhead squat portion of the lift. Um, that's another video. Those are different techniques. We're just going to talk about the overhead squat specifically. So however you get the bar over your head, we want to maintain the alignment of the bar, the shoulder, and the ankle at all times. So as long as those three points are lined up, bar, shoulder, ankle, you're stacked. And you've got the bar overhead in the most efficient way. So you'll be able to lift more weight and hold it up there for a longer period of time if those three points are stacked. So once we've got our start position, our squat stance, and we've got the bar overhead with the alignment of bar, shoulder, and ankle, then we can start the descent or the, the overhead squat itself. So while keeping your head inside, which is your ears slightly in front of your arms, you're gonna initiate the movement by a knee break style of squat, meaning the knees are gonna slightly drift forward and flare out to create or to start the descent of the squat. It's a very upright squat, just like the front squat is. So by flaring the knees out slightly and initiating the movement with a knee break style, it's gonna keep you upright for longer. Then you're gonna ride the squat down just like we do in the front and in the back squat while maintaining the alignment of bar, shoulder, and ankle. So depending on your level of mobility or your current range of motion, this is where you might be restricted in terms of how deep you can squat while maintaining the alignment of the bar, the shoulder, and the ankle. So we want everybody to work within their current range of motion, meaning go as low as you can while maintaining bar, shoulder, and ankle alignment. If you get to a point, maybe it's halfway down, maybe it's a quarter of the way down, where the bar starts to drift forward or you can no longer maintain that, then that is your current level of mobility and we would want to perform your repetitions within that level of mobility. So like we said in the beginning, um, it's a good barometer to check in on your level of mobility from a day-to-day -day basis, uh, but it does require adequate mobility of the ankle, the hip, and the shoulder to be able to get into the rock bottom position. At the bottom of the overhead squat, I find that most people bounce out of the bottom or rush out of the bottom, which is a big mistake. If you rush the descent, and if you bounce out of the bottom and rush the concentric part of the lift, nine times out of the 10, uh, the lifter will lose the lift forward or they won't be able to hold the, the alignment of bar, shoulder, and ankle. So it's really important to control the descent of the squat as well as control the bottom position and come up in the concentric portion of the lift also under control so that you can maintain the alignment of bar, shoulder, and ankle. Okay, so we'll go over some of the troubleshooting of the overhead squat. Um, one of the most common mistakes that we see in the overhead squat actually has more to do with the tempo 
of it. Uh, I find that people rush the descent or rush the concentric part of the overhead squat and therefore lose um, that alignment of bar, shoulder, and ankle. Um, so oftentimes one can improve the stability of their overhead squat just by slowing it down and doing the movement under more control. Um, so that's a really common one that can be fixed right away. Just do your overhead squat with a more controlled tempo. You know, three or so seconds on the way down, you know, don't bounce at the bottom, and one or two seconds on the way up. Make sure that it's under control. Uh, it's by no means a max 1RM uh, back squat or front squat weight, um, so it's not you know, something that you really should be rushing through anyway. Uh, you want to take your time when doing the overhead squat. All right, so one of the more common mistakes that we see in the overhead squat has to do with the way in which we lock it out. Uh, there are some schools of thought that preach shrugging the shoulders up to lock the bar overhead, uh, thus providing scapular stability. I don't think that this is correct at all, actually. I think that people should retract and depress their shoulder blades while holding the bar overhead uh, because, as you can see, it shortens the lever, so the bar is not as far away from the body as in the shoulder shrug version. And it also incorporates more of the musculature of the upper back. So you're getting more recruitment of the mid trap, uh, lower trap rhomboid than you do in the shoulders up position. So you want to think about locking the bar overhead with the shoulders down and the shoulders away from your ears instead of the other way, which is the shoulders up. <laughs> well guys, that's the video. If you liked the video, make sure to like the damn video. We're rolling out all kinds of new content. Coach, anything you got to say in closing about the overhead squat? No, it's just a good fundamental movement. Uh, it's one that I think everybody should try. If it's only to do at the beginning of your wor uh, workout as part of a warm up, not a bad check in to see how your overall level of mobility is that day. Yep, be safe, start light. Make sure to follow Coach Brown on Instagram. Coach, hit me with Instagram. It's B underscore Marsh 27. You should have a tattooed in the back of your head. Guys, I'll be seeing everyone, my rascals, in that next video.